Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is General Dreams. I'm Mike. So, tonight, I actually started this a couple nights ago, but I'm working on, I got, I'm missing one box of electrical stuff, but I got all my electrical stuff out here on the table, and uh, a pellet gun I gotta fix. And what I'm doing is I'm working on some wiring on the General. This is a mess. So I've got wiring here for future stuff. Uh, these are wires for the seat heaters that I haven't put in yet because I'm too chicken to pull my seats apart. <laughs> but one of these days I'm going to do that. Anyway, I'm trying to get the wiring. Well, can't really see it. Anyway, trying to get the wiring to the radios up there. I've got wiring going to these lights now uh, actually I just did that connection and uh, I've got a little clip of that I'll show oh no I haven't finished that connection so these wires here go up to these two lights and I made this splitter to tie into my Polaris wiring that goes to this light down here this is a, a light that I bought from Polaris when I bought the machine this is wiring I bought from Polaris when I bought the machine. It's tied into the, uh, what do they call that? Pulse bar. Has a relay and all that. So, what I'm doing is I check the amps that they call on this. Because I kind of wanted these lights and that light to be on the same switch. But, it calculates out to be just a little bit too many, a little bit over the amperage of that uh that system there because this is rated for 15 amps so the way i'm doing this because this is going to have these deutsch connectors which is what these are called <clears throat> so i'm going to be putting this deutsch connector on here and then i can plug this into here so then when i turn on this light right here, it'll also turn on those. But then if I want to experiment, these take Deutsch connectors in the back of these lights also. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a wire that goes up through the dash and up in here. And then uh, I'm gonna be putting in one of those uh, boxes, I'll show you in a minute, where you have the control panel inside and you got the panel in here. So I'll be able to hook it up to that or I can put a Deutsch connector on it and I can plug it into this if I want to experiment because I, I just like to have the option if it'll run these lights and those lights I I think I'd like that but these and that and then this on another switch someday some lights up on top up there um, but I have options that way. Anyway, these Deutsch connectors, if you're not familiar with them, are uh, a watertight connector. It's got these little silicone rubber pieces in the back. These pieces right here. They slide over the wire, and then once you crimp the ends on, they push into this back here. <clears throat> and then uh, this gets sealed when you plug it in because this has a silicone rubber seal going around that part right there so i could uh set this camera on a stand and i can show you how those uh crimp together this is a deutsch uh i think i'm saying that right um crimper these are not cheap so i borrowed that from work um these connectors i bought a package of these on amazon pretty affordable these here come with uh, i think 25 or something like that male and female connectors and the ends the problem is the ends that come with this are for production and they've got the little metal tabs that squeeze and that does not work 
with the crimper I have access to. I could buy one of those kind of crimpers, but I already have access to this crimper. So I went ahead and bought the other kind, which are more designed for field repairs. Um, I can show you one of these that's already out in the open. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So it's an solid connector. So the upper part where the pin is, is the same on all of them. This part here is solid. You just strip the wire back, slide it in there, and that crimper is designed. It does a perfect pinch on them. Um, so these are easier to use anyway. But in a production setting, I think those other ones are cheaper to manufacture. I think that's why they consider them a uh, production one. If you have the right crimper, it looks like from all the videos I've looked up, that it's just as easy to use those other ones as it is to use these. But like I say, I have this crimper uh, accessible to me. So, and then I'm using this uh, wire stripper from Harbor Freight. And so far, this is the best stripper I've ever bought. Uh, it actually works. So those aren't quite that one stripped enough this one needs just a hair more i think so i will uh set this on a stand and i will show you how those go together all right okay so these are stripped and then make sure the wires are twisted nice and tight and you take this whoo almost dropped it so i'm working on putting a female end on which takes the pin, which is male, that slides into the other one. Kind of slide this on, get a little twist. I got one stray wire here. See if I can get that in, in the connector. Come on. It's easy to do until you turn a camera on and try to show people. All right, that looks better. Twist those together nice. I kind of spin this as I go on. So this is 16 gauge wire and these connectors, the biggest size you can put is 16 gauge. So they fill the thing up fully. You gotta be very careful to get them in there. So this is all adjusted. You put it in until the thing is flush or just a hair above. This here, you adjust the depth in and out. You set this for the uh, gauge that of wire that you're using. And then you just take this and drop it in there like that. And you squeeze this. And this doesn't open back up until you've squeezed it all the way. And it automatically resets. And it's got this nice professional crimp so we have that and then this one slides on here come on Okay, it's going to fight me a little bit. Anyway, I showed you how that one goes on. I'll put the other one on. I'll bring you back. Okay, that one really fought me. So, what we have is, um, you know, you never want a stray wire when you're doing connections. But when these go in to the connector, or the, the other part of the connection... They're right next to each other like that, real close together, about that close. So if you had a stray wire coming out of one of them, it can touch the other and arc out and ruin your connection. So these have this little, see if I can get you a little closer. Woo! Can you see it? Oh, come on. You might be able to tell that bump right there 
goes in here and inside these is a little uh, tab. Does that help? I don't know if it helps. Anyway, inside there, there's a little tab. And you just take these and whoop, make sure you get the orientation correct. Uh, let's see here. So you want the the tab that locks them pointed this way and the red on top. So it would go in this way. Otherwise you wind up crossing your wires and that would be bad. So that goes in here. The wires stick through a little bit and then there's a little plastic tab. It just goes in and click. And then, see, the wires won't come back out. Then you take this little silicone rubber piece, which is really tight on these. And you can... <laughs> Part of that was out of the picture, wasn't it? Um, I was watching what I was doing, not through the camera. So, these here, you just stick in the hole. Make sure that you got the red on the correct side. In my situation, the, the red is up here with this facing me. They just push in. There's a little tab inside there. And then you, it won't come back out. There's a tool that you can put in there to release them if you need to reuse them. You can reuse these. Um, and then you just shove this silicone piece in there nice and tight. And then you could use a little screwdriver and push it in a little more. Then there's a little plastic piece that goes right, right inside this hole that you can't see. You can kind of see. Anyway, a little plastic piece that goes in there and locks it all so it can't come apart. And then you can plug it in. So I'll go grab that piece. We'll throw it in and uh, we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so this little green tab goes inside this hole and locks it all down. So it goes in and that little wedge shape part of it goes behind the tabs that lock those in so it can't come apart unless you were to pull this back out. So pop that in there. And get it to do a little willy that goes in there. Get it behind those tabs and it'll drop right in if you get it behind the tabs. Come on. You can get the screwdriver down on there to help. Okay. I think I need to be showing you this sitting at a bench. <laughs> Probably hard to believe, but the <laughs> I just put that other one together and it just fell right into place. Piece of cake. It's not getting on the right side of the tab is what's going on. Roll that over. Push it in. There it goes. Just slides right in once you get it on the right side of the tab. And then it goes down and locks in. Now none of these will come apart. Then you can take this screwdriver and you can just work that silicone piece in there. It's pretty, pretty resilient. Get those pushed down in there. And it's got those little ribs going around it so that it locks in. And uh, once you get those, it'll look like this. <laughs> so, I can finish that later. Anyway, then this just clicks right in here. Okay, so now I'm going to test that and see what it does. If I take this thing, set this camera back here, I should be able to flip that switch and have that light and these lights come on. You're going to be here with me and see if it actually works.
there it is all right so i got a light on each pillar and a light down there so once i get wires built for this then i can try wiring that in and then i can turn on with these or i can hook these up to that other part i'm going to put in in the future and then the other thing that i did the other night that i never done i put these lights on if you've been watching my channel a while i put those lights on years ago i put these lights on i don't know probably one year ago those have never been wired those have never been wired so i finally ran the wires to those i've got a switch in here on the dash and voila i finally have backup lights slash cargo lights only took a couple years to get to so while I'm working on all of this and as I mentioned in the beginning that I'm trying to get um, power to those radios right now it just has a power port you can plug into a lighter so I can put that down there and just plug it into the plug on the machine and I have a wire hanging there I've had it with a temporary wire just draped down and a splitter so I'm gonna try to run a wire that's what that string is going through the hole in the frame over there I'm gonna try to run a power wire up that up to here and then I'll have a fuse under the hood for it and I'll uh if they blow, blow a fuse, I pop the hood and I'll change it under here instead of having to mess with all the wiring up there. But I do want to have some sort of quick, connect, <laughs> quick disconnect up in this area so that if I need to pressure wash the whole machine, if it gets filthy, you know, or every once in a while, just from regular use, even if you're not getting it muddy. If I need to pressure wash this down, this radio is not waterproof. That radio is not waterproof. This one probably handle it better than that one. But I want to be able to unplug those wires and take that off in case I need to pressure wash it. It's part of why they're mounted in the ceiling. So they're protected. They very seldom would ever see any water. If I wash inside here, I just spray from here back and I do from the dash down. And everything up here I do by hand. <coughs> so, I got to make a few more of those connectors. And then I got to work on that box over there. Um, so, I might show you that box. And then, we will uh, probably show you the install on the next video. So, what I got, let me take this off of here. So what I wound up buying was this Nylite 6 gain switch panel and it has uh, fuses and relays built into the system. So that'll be a nice addition to the wiring, make things a little bit easier. So we'll have more on that on the next video. So that's it for this video. It's getting a little bit long. So we'll just work more on this wiring and we'll see you again next week. And we'll show you more about this, uh, what I call it. It's a Nylite six gang switch panel. We'll talk more about that on next week's if. <laughs> ah, that's funny. We'll talk more about that on next week's episode so thank you for uh for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share it really helps the channel and we'll see you on the next one see ya